Hi everybody, Martin here and welcome to the seventh part of the architecture asset tutorial series and also the last one that we will spend in Substance Painter. Today we will create these two wonderful smart materials and then we will export our created textures to be able to later get back to Blender. So let's waste no time and jump right into Substance Painter where we have the metal material we created last time. What we want to do now is to combine this material with a bronze material. The idea is that there is this dirty part of the bowl where the dark metal is, but here and there, especially on the edges, the original layer of bronze material shines through. First off though, let's mask our metal material to appear only on the bowl. You do it by creating a black mask and then selecting this polygon fill tool with the mesh fill active and opacity is set to one. Click on the bowl and that's it. Then let's hide the material to improve our performance so that the software doesn't have to compute it all the time. We will be focusing mainly on creating the bronze now and only then we will combine these two together. And since you already know the drill from the last time, let's go through these materials fairly quickly. First start with the base for our bronze. Instead of using a fill layer to build it from scratch, let's use this substance source library here Log into your Substance account and then you can download this bronze yellow material which will give a solid basis to start with. Once you download it, you can find it here in the Materials tab and then simply drag and drop it into your Layers window. Since we will be creating more layers for this material, let's hit Ctrl G and stack this layer under a group called Bronze Bowl. Now make a mask for this group and with Polygon Fill again, let's only fill the mesh of our bowl. On this material, let's start by changing the projection mode to triplanar and play with some values here. Make the bronze a bit more saturated by changing the color adjustment to 0.6 and also change the bronze roughness. Let's go with something like 0.3. And that seems fine to me. Continue by creating a fill layer and making it this dark red. If you click here on the dynamic icon, you can change the hue. Then deactivate the height and normal channels and make the roughness 0.8 and metalness to 0.25 or something like that. Add a black mask and today, instead of setting our masks manually in mask editor, we will simply be choosing from different generators or some presets here in the smart masks menu and then adjust those. It generally saves some time and you can achieve great results even with these presets. So for this first fill layer, let's use a generator and choose this dirt effect here. Already you can see that it nicely masked different areas of our bowl with this nice dirty pattern. Let's lower the level to 0.5, raise the dirt contrast slightly, then raise the crunch amount to about 0.45 and edge masking to 0.3 and after that let's add a bit of dirt level something like 0.6 might work better one thing we forgot was to change the name of the layer never forget to change the name of the layer or your projects will become a mess like my projects when i'm not recording a tutorial so name this one for example dirt cavity this part of the series is all about saving time, so let's add a new layer by duplicating this previous one. We will only change several settings here, name it Dirt Edges, go even darker with the color, set roughness to a lower number and metalness all the way to zero. Then delete this dirt masking effect and instead let's use this Gun Edges Smart Mask. And we don't really have to change anything because this already added the dirt I wanted. So let's move on, add another fill layer and this time only use height and roughness channels. We'll be creating some surface variation and we only need to break up the roughness of the surface and slightly adjust how it rises above the bronze. So we don't need more channels. Set the height to something small like 0.02 and roughness to 0.65. Then name your layer, surface variation or some such, and add a black mask. For this one, let's actually use the good old mask editor. 
add grunge map 012 here and Gaussian spots 2 here. Together it adds nice variation to the surface. Raise the global contrast a bit and now to see the effect, which is important to see what you're actually doing, uh, raise the opacity of both of the textures, first one to one, second one to something lower like 0.4. You can then go in and change the ambient occlusion opacity to 0.3 and curvature to 0.45. That's it for the surface variation. I think it looks fine. The last layer we add to this material is edge highlight. So add a new fill, make it this bright orange color. Then change the roughness to 0.2 and make it fully metallic. The idea is that at the edges there are some spots where the surface is worn and the layer of the dirt is scraped to reveal the base material. So for that we can actually activate the height channel again and lower it to something like negative 0.02 so that these spots are slightly lower than the rest. Now add a mask and for this one choose a smart mask preset called Edge Strong where we only lower the curvature slider a bit. And with that, I think our quick bronze material is ready. In the upcoming Spartan texturing course, we will actually create a more advanced bronze material and we will go more in depth on Substance Painter. So watch out for that one, if you decide to buy it, of course. It's coming sometime at the beginning of the next month. I will announce the release date soon. With that done, it's time to put these two materials together. You just put the metal grunge material underneath our bronze bowl and group these two together. Now to mask out our bronze, let's add a generator to it and choose this metal edge wear. And don't forget to make the metal material visible so that you see the final result. This might get a little slower, but hopefully you have some powerful machines you're working on. Let's go and set some values here. Go with 0.99 to the wear level, 0.68 in the wear contrast setting, change grunge amount to 0.04, grunge scale to about 13, edge smoothness to 0.8, ambient occlusion masking to 0.17, and curvature weight to 0.77. That gives us a base for this mask but at this point I wasn't really happy with how it looks. So here you can see me tweaking the result and I recommend you do the same. And as I've already said in probably all the parts of this series, tweak it until you like it and try to not copy my values, instead focus on what you like. To improve the performance, of course, you can go in, create a mask for this whole group and mask out only the bowel. And in the end, these are the values I've come up with. So if you feel you want to achieve the exact same result like I did, you can copy all these. Now, however, it's time to move on to our last material, which will be our burning coal and sticks. I admit this might be a bit anticlimactic ending for the substance painter part, since this will be an easy one. Basically just start with downloading these two materials from Substance Source, uh, Lava Flow and then Rotten Wood. Once you have them both, put the Rotten Wood into your Layers window and start tweaking it a bit. First change the color to this dark orange and then go in and rotate your texture slightly to about 70 or whatever you need to have the wood texture flow across the sticks better. This looks much better, so now turn the scale up to 2. Once you're done with that, add the lava material above your wood. Be warned, this material is actually quite demanding on your hardware, so it might be a bit slower to work with it. I actually sped up a lot of the computing in editing, so that's why it's so fast in this video. Anyway, we will change just a few things here, so jump in, change the lava color to very dark red, rock color as well. Go and change the scale to 2, add more cracks like 0.7 and finally lava density to 0.8.
And now all we need to do is to add a mask and manually paint away the lava material at the edges of your sticks, where the wood has not yet burnt all the way. You can use the default brush and remember, if you hold down control, right mouse button and then horizontally drag, it changes the scale of the brush and if you drag vertically, it changes the smoothness of it. However, in this case, it might be better to change it to a bit more random brush here. So I chose this artistic heavy sponge to paint with. If your brush has a black color here, it means you'll be deleting portions of the white mask. And if you want to return these back, just hit X and the color changes to white. And with that, I quickly painted the mask. So let's just speed up the process here. To make this part complete, I actually went in and using the techniques I showed you earlier, I created a new wood layer and masked it out so that it's only visible on the little pegs here. By now I'm sure you can do it on your own and if not, I might actually be a failure as a teacher. Well, hopefully not. So now we've created our final material in Substance Painter and it's time for one last thing and that is to export our textures so that we can use them in Blender. For that you actually just go here and hit this Export Textures option or Ctrl Shift E. In the upcoming Spartan texturing course I'll go deeper on how exactly to export your textures here and how to set up everything properly. But for now all you need to do is to deactivate this non-texture set which we haven't used throughout the texturing process since it contains just that one wooden peg. Choose this PBR metal rough preset set where you want your textures to be exported and we are done here. Next time we'll have a look at how to plug in your textures in Blender and we'll do a bit of lighting as well. So stay tuned and as always, if you like this tutorial, click on the subscribe button. I love that there's a growing number of you who did it and also all the comments. Ah, thanks guys, it's awesome. And yes, as I mentioned several times, the Spartan texturing course is finally coming. Took me long enough, I admit. So maybe consider subscribing to my newsletter so that you don't miss any news on this project of mine. And with that, I bid you farewell and see you next time. Martin out.